we are used to work face to face uh, with the people and uh, now we had the challenge um, to make an application for it for the um, personal family counseling to translate this into an application so hello again to the second episode about the Stiftung Ambulantes Kinderhaus Pets München or um, in a short version ATN. And I'm having a full house or couch today <laughs> with Sandra and Consti from at AKN and uh, my colleague Thomas, which you may know already from one of our previous episodes. We all work together on the uh, building of the app Mood for um, the AKN. And in the second episode, we will dig a little more deep into the process of how we built the app and how we collaborated as a team. So to start, maybe you want to introduce yourselves again, Sandra again, very <laughs> briefly. Um, yeah, start. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sandra. Um, I'm at uh, Stiftung Ambulantes Kinderhaus Pizza München for about two years. And uh, my role is I'm the um, business unit manager of uh, research and education. Uh, I'm Konstantin. I joined the AKM this year in April uh, and I was especially hired for this project. I'm a project manager um, only working on the app and my main focus is the collaboration between our systems and uh, the newly developed uh, systems. Hi, my name is Thomas. I'm a senior software developer at TPM and I was responsible in that project for the technical architecture, leading the development team. And I was also in very close collaboration with the colleagues from AKM because we aligned on technical topics, we discussed on the features and therefore I'm here as well to give some inputs on that side. Thank you. And I kind of have a special role today as well, because I'm not just the host, but i um, also worked on um, marketing and content and especially copy for the app we created together. The AKM is a nonprofit organization. And what you guys do is basically counseling families who have to face a serious crisis because someone is seriously ill or they have to deal with death. So it's quite a specific service that you offer. And I think this required a very special setup and had some circumstances that we had to consider when building the app. Maybe you want to um, let us know what these requirements were and how we tackled them. So we had a pretty clear concept in mind what the app should be able to do and what kind of problems it should solve. Um, but Translating this from a person who's um, not in the same situation as the user, it was quite difficult um, to find out if we we're going the right direction or not. And that was very important for us that we have user testings with uh, families um, in need of our service, but also other people that are working with or for the AKM um, to get their insights if we can really translate this very personal analog process of counseling families in crisis to a digital product that gives them the same sense of certainty that they will be yeah, helped and that they get uh, the service they need. So the first project phase was basically about user testing and getting insights from people who are affected. Yeah, after the first designs were um, crafted by um, you guys, we had the chance to um, walk through these prototypes uh, together with um, with families. And I'm, as a project manager, was very happy that we had the chance to have this in a professional setup with you together, um, because the learnings that we had um, were very important to translate from the prototypes to the final product that we have right now. So without these tests and the professional setup we had in this environment, uh, the app would not have this um, direct and customer centric um, approach that it has right now. And I think right now we're really on a point where it helps the families um, in the tough situations that they're in. Wow, yeah, definitely. And what about the setup that was required by the fact that the AKN is an NGO? So um, as an NGO, you always face, of course, the money problem because you don't know how to finance everything. And um, 
this is actually something where I learned a lot about the yeah the approach that also big corporations take to help NGOs. So a lot of the infrastructural things that we um, use right now for the app and the technology is more or less on a pro bono license. So we don't have to pay for the full service or we only have to pay um, a smaller amount than, than corporations in the in the economic uh, field. So this was tough decisions on the one side to find the right company to deliver the technology for us. But on the other hand, um, then also a great sense of relief that this is out there and the service is there for us uh, to use. Okay. And Thomas, from your perspective, working at DPM in the technical field, were there also some requirements which were necessary or which were the basis for some of the decisions um, you took? Yeah, definitely. Um, in general, we had two huge fields we had to tackle. On the one hand, it was that we need to come up with a design where all of the target audience feel addressed and everybody feels comfortable using the app. We had to be very carefully with our designs so that they are um, express what the app should um, should be used for, but um, make the persons feeling comfortable using it as well. And what really helped us um, was that we were in close contact, that we had this, this user research phase. And what also helped us was that um, we needed to take care not use a huge amount of budget for the design and for implementing the designs. And therefore we found a library the design was built on that helped us on the one hand not come up from scratch with all the designs and all the building blocks, but allows us at the same time to customize it in a way that we can build the custom designs we invented before. And the second challenge we had to face was the, the technical approach, the technical implementation, because we wanted to address as much platforms as possible. So we wanted to be on um, Android devices, on iOS devices and in the web as well. And instead of building each of these platforms on their own, we built the code as a cross-platform hybrid app. That means we can serve all of the target devices from the same implementation, from the same code base. Okay. And in terms of accessibility, because what I've understood is that one aim of the app was to make your counseling services available to a wider range of people, even outside of the Munich or Bavarian area. So what did you do to make this web, this app as accessible as possible? Yeah, actually we have different parts in the app. Um, and we have like a knowledge database um, to get um, easy information. Um, we also have uh, like support services um, that the families or users can uh, filter and search for. And uh, we also have a kids zone, um, like a user interface, especially for children. And um, yeah, we try to make the app um, easily accessible for all our target groups. So um, it's also barrier free and in different languages. Now the first version is just in English, but um, hopefully other languages will follow soon. So um, yeah, these were also a big challenge to um, yeah make the app um, good for all the different target groups that we have. Yeah, and uh, to add on that, I think it's really special that you have this big knowledge database with also legal advice and information that may be hard to understand from for people with a migration background. So this is translated into easy language to make that super accessible. Mm -hmm. And also, which is also, I think, quite special is that the kids zone not only focuses on um, the kid which is affected directly, but also on the siblings which are neglected quite often as far as I understood. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really a, a big, uh, big benefit of the app. The very wide target group. Yeah, and app. So um, even if it's really specific, but um, still. And um, Thomas, from a DPM perspective, how did we approach this project? And maybe you can also compare it a bit to other projects and what was different or was it just the way we always do things? Mm -hmm. Well, um, as already mentioned, we started with um, the first designs based on the information and requirements we had. And then we handed them over to the AKM to do the very first user research. Um, we had actual um, people who were affected from, from illnesses 
and they um, tested designs, they gave us feedback, and then we were able to um, change our designs accordingly. And after that, we actually started with the implementation so that we have a solid foundation of the features you want to build. And then in the implementation phase, we, um, before we started that actually, um, and while the user research was ongoing, um, internally, we aligned very close between tech and design to, as I mentioned, find a library, find a solution that allows us to build a customized design, build a customized app, but also um, spare the budget, budget and not need to implement everything from, from scratch. And as we then started in the actual implementation phase, we started at the very beginning with the, with the home page and then went feature-wise. And while we did this, we were also um, often communicating with you guys. We had our weeklies, we had our dailies, and then yeah, slowly built one and more features. And I think the, the most important part for us here was that we had this individual approach on the specific features that are also were, were ready from our side because um, in our day-to-day -day business, um, maybe you can imagine it's always a little bit hectic and um, there's a lot to do, um, especially with the global pandemic still there. And um, this is a tough situation for us and for the experts we have in-house that have to provide all the contents that have to provide their feedback and um, this was for us um, a great opportunity to have this close collaboration and this close um, yeah, decisions on which features will be coming next and what we are ready to implement. And um, therefore, I think we had a pretty smooth um, walk through the whole process um, to build the app and, and always work on the topic that is the most um, important at this very moment. Mm. Yeah. And, and while you were mentioning that, um, one thing that came to my mind is we ran the project in an agile way, even though the, the scope of the project was defined from the very beginning, but we nevertheless decided to do it in an agile way to really have the opportunity to react on implementation steps, to react on design changes and to react on more input we get from you guys. I think it was a, a very long learning process yeah. uh, for, for all, uh, for everybody involved. And for me, it was the first time building a nonprofit app for you guys, maybe also, um, and, uh, this agile approach being able to, to adapt to the challenges arising in the process um, was very important. You, you talked about features a lot now. Can you just for the audience, let us know, or maybe Sandra, you want to um, clarify what the main features of the app are? Yeah, the main features um, is more or less the, um, the crisis hotline, because um, this is the most important thing for us, because we already had a crisis hotline uh, called Woofy and Sunsec, um, and now we have a digital version of it. and. Um, yeah, accessible to uh, the whole target group in whole Germany. And um, yeah, it was um, a challenge to make a digital product um, out of it. And um, yeah, I think this is the main feature for us. And uh, I also want to mention um, what I really helped us um, not to lose ourselves in the process. Um, where the, the meetings that we have had with you guys, um, like our weeklies, for example, very well structured and um, we always knew what to do next and um, what you need from us or we need from you or whatever. So um, there was always like the, the you know, like a guidance um, from, from you. And um, yeah, it was good also to work together with our different departments and um, yeah, make it happen. So I understood that especially the the option to call 24 hours a day, be available around the clock is a super important feature to you guys that is now available via the app. But I think there are some more very useful features. Maybe uh, Thomas, do you have a favorite feature? Uh, yeah, actually I have one um, because there's a section in the app where you can search for experts, you can search for contact persons, you can help with special yeah, special situations. And um, since it's a mobile app and you can also use it when you walk around, walk around your, your house, um, you can enable a location-based search. So you can make it so that the app detects your location 
and you can search for experts close by. And you can also filter the result list that you especially search for some categories that are only in a radius of, for example, 10 kilometers, which I personally find very, very cool. It was also one of the most complex and challenging app um, features implementation wise, but I'm super happy with the result. And picking up on that, the location-based service we offer the, the families um, is also something that makes it for us as an at maintenance part very easy because we have implemented the whole content management system through Content Fault and we can use it from our side to update all these informations and to add new information, to add new experts um, with our database growing. So we can also expand our service um, towards um, new areas where we maybe haven't thought of yet. And also families can reach out to us with feedback and say, hey, I'm in, in, in this area and I didn't find a physiotherapist for my child, um, but I know there are some, maybe you can have another look at this area and then we can update the information on this. So um, it's a constant growing um, database and therefore also the services for our families and the, the coverage hopefully grows um, over time. There's one work stream we haven't talked about um, that much so far and that's the app name how did you come up with the name of the app and and we also need to reveal the name i think we haven't mentioned it yet if people want to download the app and i think also tone of voice was an issue that or was a work stream that we had to tackle and come up with a certain tonality and style on how we want to talk or how the app should talk to the customer yeah right this was um yeah, another topic because we have a uh, um, specific um, tone of voice in AKM and uh, of course we want to have a similar tone of voice within the app and um, it was um, a challenge to um, yeah face all the different target groups and uh, that's why um, we planned another workshop for um, the tone of voice to create that and we are super happy with it and I think all the users as well because we did some tests on them and um, yeah, we also had a workshop for the name of the app. Um, yeah, um, it was difficult because everybody had a, had a different view or a different idea. But in the end, uh, we are super happy um, that our app is called Mood now. Uh, so for Tim Buffermillion. And um, yeah, we are still building the uh, logo and um, the icon. And yeah, it, it already looks pretty good. And um, yeah, it's in all of our heads. So. Why, why did you decide to come up with a new name or why did you want a new name for the app and not just call it AKM? Yeah, yeah we decided on a different name um, because um, we want to have a separate project that is um, not too much connected to AKM because um, AKM we operate just in Bavaria and uh, now we have a nationwide project and um, people or services in Berlin, for example, they don't identify with the uh, AKM in Munich. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we want to have a separate name and a separate branch, uh, brand. Okay. Yeah. And I know that finding names that was involved in the pro process is always super tough. And in the end, I have to say that mood or courage really boils it down to what you guys do. You give courage in a situation where it may be very easy to lose hope and where you could ne really need that. So I think it's a great name for the app. Everyone in the families love it. Last but not least, is there something that you've learned during the project, a key takeaway that you want to share? And maybe if Thomas, you want to go first and then Konsti and then Sandra. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's do that. Um, yeah, first of all, as you mentioned, the target group is very special. We have a very sensible audience. And therefore, we had to um, be very careful with the design, but also with accessibility features and, and make the app work for a huge um, range of, of different people. And another important thing for us was that um, the nonprofit character of the client we already mentioned, and that we had to be very careful with the budget. And um, yeah, despite we tried to be very effective and build on existing stuff and do not re reinvent the wheel, um, finally, we also donated a huge amount of um, implementation work to the client because we we love what we're doing. We love that you are helping um, the children and then their relates. 
and therefore we wanted to help as well and just build a great product that helps the people. Yeah, first of all, thanks for the donation. I think this is a great um, opportunity for us to, to, to have a partner for you, uh, like you that helped us build this app and, and, and be that generous. And, and uh, as I said, budget is always a topic. Um, and for me, the greatest challenge or the greatest learning from this whole project was communication. I think it's the first time for me, as I said, to build a, a, a non-profit app um, with a humanitarian focus and uh, the communication it took um, to make this possible and to have the process transparent for everyone so they understand what is the next step, what are we doing right now and why is it important that we do that. I think this is something um, that will help us also um, have this app be further developed in the future and, and have the services extend and the content as well. Yeah, we made it and I think we grew um, through this project and um, yeah, um, now everybody's involved and we are really looking forward. Thank you for sharing. It was a pleasure having you here and especially the two of you. It's, <laughs> I mean, Thomas, he was on the couch on us. It's just okay. -ish. And yeah, thanks for sharing. I think it's time for lunch now. It was a pleasure having you. And yeah, see you, see you again soon. And you guys out there, thanks for watching and listening and have a great day. This podcast is brought to you by DPM, a digital agency specializing in building and optimizing digital solutions.